Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Johnny Chivers. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working Monday to Friday in the AWS tech stack. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the full text search capabilities of AWS Aurora Postgres Flavor. This is a real life use case. This is something that I've implemented and used on a daily basis. I've made all the resources for free on my GitHub, link in the description below, where you can go and download them and follow along with me. This will be a step-by-step -step tutorial and I'll guide you through every step that it takes to set this up. Of course, the data is not real, but I've modeled it off real life. In this example, if you look at the data file on GitHub, you can see that we're using customer data. We're primarily concerned with the name fields, that's first name, middle name, and last name. And what we would normally do in an application, if I had a user, an end user that wanted to search for names, we could form a SQL query that looks a bit like this. We could put a like clause in and then we could concatenate those three fields at the end of the were and do a like search. Or we could maybe write it like this where we have the three fields separate or we could do a union of the data that looks like this. And it's all okay, it works, it's fine, but it's not the best solution for this type of data or data that you want to actually search for words through like emails or documents, or maybe you have a description and like an application on your phone that details, I don't know, the hotel that you stayed at last year and you want to search through all this information. And that's where full text search comes in. But what is full text search? When we search, we usually have two things to worry about, precision and recall. On the like clause, again, example on screen, we have high precision. We only bring back the data that exactly matches that like clause, but we have lower recall, i.e. we bring back less results. As we increase the recall, i.e. bring back the results, we lessen the precision to do so. But full text search lets us do something slightly different where we can increase the recall without decreasing, that's bringing down the precision. And we can introduce things like ranking, where we can search data and then rank it on a search like you do in Google. This is particularly useful for the name data where we might want to search for a name in a full name column that we create, but we might want to give more weighting to the last name. So if we match the last name, we might say give that a higher ranking than if we match that name search on the first name, for example. And that's what full text search lets us do. It lets us bring in our own sort of Google search into our applications without the overhead of managing more clusters or more compute. Postgres does it out of the box. And that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to set up that full text search. I'm gonna take you through the different samples, the different ways to index that data and the different way to rank that data. So let's jump onto the console and we'll get our low cost solution up and running in AWS Aurora. Okay guys, that's me logged back into the AWS console as usual. The first thing we want to do is go to RDS to spin up our Aurora instance. So type in RDS at the top and go to RDS. Once RDS is loaded, go to create database at the top or alternatively, if this is your first time that you've been onto the console and it doesn't appear, go to databases down the left hand side and then go create database. Once on, we're going to use standard create. We want Aurora, we want Postgres, which is the second one down. We want provisioned, and we'll just leave it on 11.9, that's fine. We're gonna use dev slash test because we don't need the production instance obviously for this. I'm gonna name this demo so I have it. Leave your master username as Postgres, and then type in a password that you're going to remember. Click on burstable classes, and click on T3 medium as it's the smallest instance we can have. We don't need a replica. We want to put it inside the default VPC. Well, you leave the default subnet group as well. We'll want to make it publicly accessible. Make sure you hit yes, and make sure you say create new VPC security group. So publicly accessible, new VPC security group. And I'm just gonna call this one demo uh, post. That should do the trick. So public accessible, make sure there's a yes so we'll not be able to connect and make sure you create a new VPC security group for that purpose. After that, click create database and it'll run off and create the database in the background for us. This will take about five or six minutes. While this database is often creating, if you go to the PG admin link down below, you can download the client 
that's the tool that's going to let us interact with the database that we're creating from this page. Select the one that's for your operating system, accept everything and install it. And then once we're ready to go, we'll pick it up together and I'll show you how to connect into the database. That's everything for now. So I'm just going to pause the video here where that database is creating. And once it's up and running, i.e. when these all go available, not just the top one, including this one goes available, I'll turn the video back on and we'll pick it up. As I said, could be another five minutes. Okay, that took about seven minutes in total. And after hitting this refresh icon a couple of times, it's went completely available. The next thing you need to do is grab the scripts that I've pre-prepared for us. So in the link below to the GitHub on the page, then there's three SQL scripts, as you can see. I'm just going to go and download those as a zip file. And I'm just going to save that in my downloads for now. That's fine. And exit out of that. Next thing you need to do is load up the PG admin client that you downloaded whilst the Aurora database was setting up and get that loaded up. Okay, if it's your first time loading up PG admin, you'll have to set a password and if not, you'll land on the page like this. So to connect, you want to go over to the browser on the left hand side, you want to right hand click servers, you want to click create and you want to go to server. In order to connect, the first thing you want to do is give it a name. So I'm just going to call this demo. Then for host name stroke address and connection, go back on the RDS, click on the writer instance and copy and paste the endpoint name in full. So copy and paste. Port's correct, database is correct, username is correct and password is what you gave it when we were configuring. And then you want to hit save. And as you can see, it's appeared on the left hand side. Next thing you want to do is go into that and have a look and there's two databases. You want to go to databases and right hand click. You want to hit create database and you want to give a database a name and I'm going to call this customer. This is the database that we're going to work inside for the rest of this tutorial. Click save and it will create a database called customer. Double click on it to make it come alive. Once on it, hit the little plus icon on the right if you're using the same client as me. Hit it three times and we'll end up with three separate tabs here. On the first tab, let's go open. Let's go into your downloads or wherever you actually put the scripts that we downloaded from GitHub. So mine's were in downloads, Postgres main search, that's the ones. First one you wanna open is the create table. So I'm gonna select that. Second tab, we'll do the same. I wanna go open and we wanna do the data insert. Third tab, I want to open again into the file and I want the full queries this time. Full queries. So back onto the first tab, this is going to create the table we're going to use for the full text search. So you can see it's just a customer table and I'm going to populate it with data in a second. So if we click into the window and you hit the play button or the run button there, you can see it was successfully created. Onto the data insert tab, this is a load of data that is off the customer table in the advanced your works database i've set it up just so it'll do a raw insert for us. so make sure you don't click anything and delete anything but it's going to insert data for us and you can see it successfully inserted 848 rows of data now on to the last tab that we opened there and this is the full text query search code that we're going to look through so as i explained in the intro to do full text query searching it's using TS vector. TS vector is creating a text search vector on our data. If I quickly highlight the top here and hit run, you'll see that we have three columns, first name, middle name, and last name. And what this part of the query is doing is combining first name, middle name, and last name at runtime into a text search vector. Then what we're doing over here is using the phrase G E E as a word to search as a text search query against the vector. So we're combining first name, middle name, last name into a text search vector, and then using full text search capabilities, we're actually looking for the word G. And if we run that query together, if you're following along, you can see that we have two rows that have the last name G. And we can actually see that in action, how that happens if we look at the second query, what's actually going on. Pulling this across, you can see that we have Orlando, N, G, and when we form this text search vector using first name, middle name, and last name, it goes in and vectorizes the data. It says that G is in the third position, 
N is in the second position and notice that it's got rid of the full stop. So the full stop of punctuation goes in full text search vectory. And then Orlando is in position one, which is correct because first name is first. To see this in a little bit more detail, I've got a little phrase here that says YouTube is the best place online for AWS. AWS tutorials are great on YouTube. If I hit the run button and open this up for us, zoom in a little tiny bit more for us, you can see that it's actually indexed the entire phrase. So it's noticed that, for example, YouTube is in position one and position 14, but it only stores at once, which means when it's looking for the YouTube, if we were to just search on this phrase, it only needs to look for it in one place, but it knows it's in there twice. You can see that the has went in, but like the likes of the dot has disappeared. You can see that things like AWS have also been in twice, but more importantly, it saves everything in lowercase, so it's now case insensitive. Of course, Doing this at runtime, i.e. computing the text search vector at runtime is quite expensive. So what you can do is actually persist the column to speed up the queries. In the next part of the code, we're going to create a column called text search vector on full name. And then we're going to set the full name equal to the first name, middle name, and last name as a text search vector. So if you just run lines 33 to 36 together, it won't make a difference and it successfully created it. And in this second part of the free of the code, sorry, from 38 to 41, I'm just showing you what the full name now looks like. So it's actually persisted the data that was before. And just to prove it still works, we're still going to search for G here against though this time the full name column. So that's the column we created as the text search vector a couple of lines ago, just to prove that it still brings us back the same result. So 44 to 51 is running the same query we had before, except this time we're looking at the full name column we just created so the data has persisted. But how do we actually know what's quicker? Let's have a look at the execution plans. So explain analyze in PostgreSQL lets us look at the actual execution plan. So this is the first one where we're actually creating that vector column, that text search vector column at runtime. So we haven't persisted anything in this query. We're saying at runtime, create the vector and then search for G. There's a couple of things on these execution plans really quickly that you need to know. This is the plan. This is actually what happened. Two things that are critical here. This is the number of rows it expected was four in the plan, but it got two. So that's actually bad in terms of query performance. You want your plan to be roughly the same as the actual rows returned. And you can see that there's 100% more rows in the actual plan versus what was actually returned. And then the second thing that's important is the actual execution time. You can see that it was 0 0.051 seconds. If we take the second query, start on line 68, this time we're running it against the column that we created and persisted the data in. And this time you can see that it was slightly faster at 0.44, so it was quicker, but more importantly, it expected two rows and it got two rows. So that means the plan is working well. There are only 800 rows in this table or just over 800 rows, and you would see better performance games on the bigger tables, but this is a really good example to get going. If you want to make it faster, and what I recommend is putting a gin index on, it takes a while to index the data, but the performance gain you get is astronomical. The gin index is a G, is it like an inverted index used when you need to search data that has like composite data amongst it. So it's really good for like string searching where like you're looking for words inside a, a sentence, which is exactly what we're doing here. In this example, we're gonna take the customer table again. We're gonna add a new column called full name index. I.e., we're gonna create the full name and index it. We're gonna create the full name the same way as before with first name, middle name, and last name. And then the last bit here is there's actually adding that gin index on the new column that we've just created and set the first name, middle name, and last name. So I'm gonna run the lines 80 to 86 together you can do the same if you're following along and it's actually created the gin index on that table that inverted index that makes it easier to search for words inside sentences again we'll use the explain and analyze which is fantastic in postgres sql we'll take a quick look really we've got the two rows again and we've got the two rows and it took 0 0.65 seconds and we're doing this on persisted columns don't forget if we then look at the index version, so the one that we've just created, so remember not 0.655, and we run this one, it happens in not 0.076. So you're seeing nearly 10 times, 10 times gain almost by adding that index. And obviously that return is exponentially increased when you have more data in your table. 
Of course, what we're looking at here is searching for the full word G, and that's why we keep getting back that last name. There is partial string searching inside PostgreSQL where you can search for strings after you start a word or a phrase. You can't search for the start of the string as what this is called a wildcard. You can only search after a word because of the way the indexes work. So this colon star means give me anything after M-A-R. So it has to start M-A-R and then give me anything. So if we have a little look, and don't forget, we're looking at this on a word by word basis. So it's gonna search word by word for Mar onwards. And if we hit a little run here, you can see that you've got Margaret, you've got Mark, you've got Mary, you've got Marlon, you've got Martin here. And if we keep going down a little bit, you've got even the surname coming up because we're looking at surnames, which is great. But what happens if we actually want to rank these searches? We want some like kind of like, okay, I'm going to search for a word, but actually I want to know what's the best word. And it has a rank for functionality as well, where TS rank on full name index, searching for that as a rank. That's been going to display it in a column, but actually it's this order by here that does the ranking for. So again, it's just a function called TS underscore rank. We're going to perform it on the full name index and we're going to look for that mar um, wildcard. And I hit run. As you can see in this example, it actually gives the same weighting to every row return. But let's say in the real world, we want to run a search against a customer database that's held in our company. And this is something I do in real life. And we want to give more weighting to the last name than the first name. So if Mar is in the last name, we want it to be weighted more. We want that to be a better search than if it turns up in the first name, which is what we would do in real life all the time. If we're searching for last names against the full name, we want it to give it more weighting. So when it's Mar, it's more weighting if it's a last name than the first name. And to do that, we set it up down here. So it's really on this line 147 to 149 is the key. When we do a set weight on this new column that we're going to create, which is going to be full name with weights. So we're giving weights to the individual components that make up the text search vector. We're going to go set weight to text search vector of last name. And because we put an A here, it means this is number one. This is the highest weighting that we can possibly have. We want last name to take precedence over anything else. Then when we do set weight to text search vector of first name, we give it a B. So this takes second preference. So this is the highest weighting. This is the second highest weighting. And then when we do the same to middle name, it becomes the third. And what we need to do is run from lines 44 to line 52. What we're doing is using the customer table, we're creating another column, which we're gonna give weights as a text search vector. We give the weights where last name has the most weight because it's A, first name has the middle weight because it's B, and then middle name has the least amount of weight because it's C, and we run that. And this time, when we do the search for Mar down between lines 54 and 65, we're going to give precedence and we're going to give more weighting if it finds Mar, the phrase Mar in the last name. And you can see that's exactly what happens. So things like Markwood, Marple, and Marshall all come first on a higher weighting. Well, if we go down to the bottom, things like Marcia, Margaret, and Martha have a lower weighting because they're in that first name. And that's because we set the ranking up here for last name to take more weight if Mar was found in it than first name. So guys, that's really everything I wanted to show you today using Aurora um, to do full text search. It's really powerful and I use it every day um, in a solution that I've built in work that does text searching from API queries to find data in our database and return it to users. And because RDS is so easy to get going in and it's relatively cheap to run Aurora, you get a really good full text search solution out of the box. So I'll make all this information for free as usual on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. Please like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.